Uh, well, my concerns is that it's not uh, a fair administration of justice. Uh, the, the Iranian government, this, Iran this court, and, and the Revolutionary Guard, which brought these charges, uh, have been unfair from the very beginning. Uh, there was no reason for him to be detained. Uh, he was held for uh, several months in isolation in the worst prison in Iran. Uh, he was only alerted, his lawyer was only alerted to the start of the trial uh, a, week in a week in advance. Uh, Jason's only had an hour and a half with his lawyer in preparation for the trial. So we're concerned that the trial is uh, not going to be fair, and in fact the whole process has been unfair. Uh, we would like it to be fair. We would like the Iranian government to abide by its own laws and to abide by the uh, provisions of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which is uh, part of its membership in the United Nations. And so uh, they're not abiding by that, and uh, we would like a fair administration of justice for our colleague. Have you had any indications that that is likely at this point? Well, there's been no indication that he's being tra treated fairly at all at every step of the process. He's been treated unfairly, and it's an abomination. It's outrage. Uh, and it would be a farce if it weren't such a tragedy. So, uh, are we confident? We're always hopeful. Uh, we're always hopeful that uh, he will be released. There's been no evidence produced that uh, he's a spy or anything like that. It's ridiculous. Uh, he's been charged with espionage and a, num and a number of other things. And there's been no evidence produced that he's done anything wrong other than behave as a normal journalist would. Do you get the sense now that we're in an era where previously journalists who wore vests that said press, um, such vests were, were seen as a, way, you know, as a form of protection um, because they're identifying as, as the free press, reporting on war, for example. Now we seem to be in a situation where the press vest, if you like, is, is like a target, a moving target. How do you respond to that, both as a journalist and, and as an editor, in terms of managing that situation? Well, I think that's true, and that's hugely concerning, is that uh, the press has become a target now. Um, obviously, we have to evaluate safety conditions in every country where we operate, uh, be very cautious about what we do and what we don't do, that we don't uh, do foolish, foolish things. But even very careful journalists, very experienced journalists who work in conflict, conflict zones have become targets uh, for attack of one sort or another. And um, the most we can do is, is take precautions. Uh, we have to cover the world. Uh, that's our job. And so we'll continue to send people overseas, but we will be extra careful with, uh, with the steps we take and with the, the level of communication we, we have with our journalists who are in the field so that we're always talking. We always want to know where they are. We want to do a full risk assessment. Uh, we sometimes use outside advisors for risk assessment. So um, we just have to do everything we can to assure the safety of our journalists in the field. 